Hi, I'm Mike, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My goal for this channel is to cover the process as we restore all five of these steam locomotives over the years. I want to do some in-depth videos kind of of the work that we do and what's required to actually restore one of these, even just cosmetically. There's a lot of metal work and welding and torch cutting and machining and woodworking that goes on behind the scenes that most people don't get to see. And what my hopes for this channel are to take an in-depth look at how we actually restore one of these, what it costs, what's involved, and provide some tutorials and how-to videos on actually performing similar work yourself, whether it be at home, or on a car, or just even at your own job. So I wanted to take a couple minutes and go through some of the engines that we're going to be working on restoring, or are in the process of restoring. So in front of me we have a H10-7688, and right now it's been sandblasted and it's been painted to kind of stabilize the locomotive currently so it doesn't deteriorate anymore before we can get to it. Um, it's missing the headlight. I currently have that in the shop. I'm going to show everybody what I've been doing with the headlights and reproducing them and making new ones. Currently the locomotive is done with the blasting and the tender, which we'll look at in a little bit, is in the process of getting sandblasted and painted as well. However, even though it's painted right now, this is not the final appearance. It needs a lot of metal work, it needs jacketing, it's gonna need a new headlight, the bell needs put back on, and uh, this is just kind of like to hold it over so it doesn't get worse until we get to it later on. This is uh, the V6 locomotive 1670. This is gonna be the next engine that goes into the restoration shop within the coming weeks. We're currently done with the tender. That's gonna come out and get painted. You'll see that in a little bit. Uh, this needs some work done to it. It needs the stack fixed. It's cracked, it needs cast and welded, which I'll show everybody how to do that. It needs the smoke box front fixed, the sulfur from the coal eight the front of the smoke box. You can see kind of the rust holes coming through it. Some old repair weld that I wanna get rid of and clean up and make look really nice. It needs an ash pan work to the roof and the cab and it also most importantly needs the jacketing to the boiler done. So here you can see some of the damage that was done with rust and from the coal to the ash pan. So I'm going to take the camera out here. So if you look inside, this, this was the pan that would catch all of the sparks and the ash from the coal when it was burned. And it actually goes around the wheel well here and it goes inside here all the way to the middle and then the engineer and fireman are able to dump the ashes over a pit and these take a beating. So this is on my list of things we're gonna have to fix. You can see there's a lot of bad rust and metal work that needs done. We're pretty much gonna have to fabricate this whole thing over again, but thankfully we have prints and this won't be really that bad. But this is some major rust repair that we're gonna have to do. Uh, you can also see there's some pinholes here on the cab sides. We took the paneling off of the cab we're going to have to replace that. You can look through the top of the roof. You can kind of see some daylight peeking through. So that's one of my first things I'm going to have to do is fix that roof. You can also see on the back there's just some work. Any, any thin metal really is going to need repaired and addressed. And additionally, any, any piece that's bolted over something, so like this handrail here, any metal that's bolted onto something is going to have to be removed and the rust inside taken out and then put back together with paint on both sides so it doesn't do it again. You can see here real good, when you have two pieces of metal together and rust forms in between them, that becomes extremely destructive. This is the other side of the locomotive here. We're missing this entire side of the ash pan. It's, it's no big deal. We'll be able to fix it. And I'm going to show everybody how we do it. Um, this is the sand dome. I have the steam dome at a shop and I'm working on fixing it but I just wanted to give everybody a view of what's next in store for the channel. This is what we're gonna be focusing on for the next maybe year, year and a half, two years. So that's it. So in addition to the H10, we're also working on sandblasting and painting the L1, number 520, one of my personal favorites. The tenders, when we restore them, we actually have to sandblast and paint the inside of the tender. Because with rust, as you'll learn as we go along with rust, if you have any rust anywhere, it's going to continue to deteriorate and eat the metal away. So on the inside of these tenders, they held coal and water. The 
water tanks were in the back. This water tank needs a lot of work, but we need to find a way to get all the rust out of it and put it, throw it away pretty much. But we need to get the rust out so we can sandblast and paint it and what's, what we do is called abate something so we don't make it any worse than what it already is. We kind of freeze it in its current condition. Um, this engine, I have to cut a hole in the floor of the tender. I would have to if it didn't already have one, and we're going to talk about that, but one of the projects we're going to work on is getting this, getting all the rust out of the inside of the tender and addressing some different things on it. So this is the tender for 1670, the V6 that we looked at before. This tender is just about done. The next step for this tender is to get sandblasted and painted. Once that's done, then the engine's going to come in and we're going to start working on that. This, in a future video, I'll explain all the work that we've done to this over the last year and a half. But some things we did to it, some highlights is we has all new wood decking on it. The headlight was rebuilt from parts of an old one. And I'm going to have a whole video series on how I rebuild the headlights because I have to build at least three more. So that's going to be exciting. There was panels on the side that needed cut out, rivet work needed done, a lot of welding we're going to talk about, stick welding, big welding, TIG welding, welding cast. So it's going to be really exciting and I'm really looking forward to sharing that with everyone. So even though we're our primary focus right now for metal work here at the museum is on the steam locomotives, we are doing some side pieces as well. This is one of the pieces we're working on. It's a GS Gone from the Pennsylvania Railroad. If you look closely at the side, you might be able to make out that at one time it was sold secondhand to the Susquehanna Railroad, and you can still kind of see Susquehanna on the side, which I think is really cool. Uh, right now, currently, last year, we cut the ends off the car. I'll, I'll show everybody that quick. So you can see on the front that we cut the ends of the car out. We actually had a company laser cut us new ends. And we're going to be putting them in with our overhead crane. And I'm going to show everybody, we're going to walk everybody through and show everybody how we do that. We're going to have to weld them in place. And we're actually going to do some hot riveting for this one. So we'll show everybody the process of how to hot rivet stuff like they used to do back in the days before welding was invented. And it's going to be really cool. So this is another one on our radar. Yes, when this is done, this will get painted. It's going to get primed and painted. We're trying to find something that is going to last you know 10 20 years so it, it'll look nice and it won't look really bad uh there are some holes on the side that were cut into it so i actually cut the panels off they had riveted cover panels on them and i had cut them off we're going to fill these and make the car look really good it looks pretty rusty as it is but it it's actually really good on the inside at some point this was modified for something else we had cut those parts out of it and this is one of our projects that we're going to work on in the spring once the winter's over. So this is the front of the B6 tender. Before it goes inside, I wanted to show everybody some different things on it quick. We remanufactured these doors. We hot riveted them in place. We manufactured and fabricated these plates that stopped the coal from coming through. This tender was unique in the fact that at some point, not the locomotive, but this tender actually had an oil bunker in here and it burned oil. So when we got this tender, it had to be converted back to look like it burned coal. So we had to add these stake pockets that I welded in place, a stick welded them, 6010 root 7018 cover, but I had it at a bevel so you can't see the weld. And I'll get the camera and I'll show everybody what I'm talking about. All right, so we're up here. Uh, these are the stake pockets. So the whole point of this was when they built these tenders, the crews were never really happy with the coal capacity they had. So what the railroads did is they added these stake pockets and wooden sides so the tender would be able to hold more coal. When we got this tender, it was kind of half put together for the 1939 World's Fair, if I remember correctly. So when we got this, these stake pockets that hold the brackets that hold the wood on were all crooked and weren't welded correctly. They didn't even have the rivets in them. So what we did was we welded them, but we hid the welds to make it look like they're riveted in place, but they're actually welded and they're a little stronger. Part of the reason is I couldn't get to the back side of these to hot rivet them in place. And also when we riveted them in place, they might've moved a little bit. 
for what we needed with these pockets. So we actually welded them. They look like they're riveted, but they're not. Behind me, behind all the scaffolding and plastic sheeting is the tender to the H10, which is currently in the process of being sandblasted and painted. Uh, my job today, what I'm going to work on today, and my second video, which should be uploaded at the same time as this one, is going to be showing everybody how I opened the hole in the tender where the water scoop used to be. I'm going to do a little bit of uh, demonstration on what it was. We'll go inside, we'll look at an engine with one, and we'll compare it. But I want to show everybody where the progress of this tender is, and I'll close out the video, and we'll go from there. So this is the inside of the scaffolding. This is the tender to the H10. Uh, it's pretty far along. It's got coats of paint on it. It's got a little bit of sandblast material thrown on that needs cleaned off, but I believe the top still needs done yet, and the inside. So thank you, everybody, for joining me. Uh, the next video is going to be on how we're going to open the hole in the bottom of the tender to get all the rust out and the some of the bracing out from inside. So I'm going to bring up, we're going to go inside the tender. I'm going to show everybody what it looks like. And I'm going to show everybody how we're going to open the hole and we're going to clean out the tender. And that's going to be our next video. Thank you for joining me.